Welcome to Jeter's Blessings, and Happy New Year's, everybody. I hope you all have a blessed and safe New Year's to come. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. In my first DIY, I've got this grapevine wreath that my sister gave me, and along with some ribbon from Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I have several picks from Walmart. Um, I don't end up using those berries. I also have this. It's really pretty. I got it from Hobby Lobby, but I don't end up using it in this either. I got those little boots from Hobby Lobby a while back. Um, these beautiful hydrangeas are from Walmart on their clearance. So I'm going to start by just making a bow with the three different ribbons. I initially measure out 10 inches for a tail and then I just make three different loops and then measure out another approximately 10 inches for the second tail and I'll just cut it and I actually do that with all three ribbons and I just layer them on top of one another Then I just take my Chanel stem and I just wrap it around and twist it really good. And then I just find a place on the wreath and attach it there. I initially was trying to put the, the Chanel stems in between some of the, um, the vines, but it was a little too difficult to do, so I just said I'll just wrap it around the whole thing. Here I'm just going to fluff the bow, um, fluffing the loops and trying to find the tail so I can go ahead and do a dovetail on all of those and kind of give those tails a little curvature to them so it'll just be nice and full looking. This is a really simple bow as well. Um, I actually got it from Nick's seasons decor um, he does this type of bow a lot and it's it's really easy to do so I take some of these picks and I cut them up and I just start putting the greenery in first and then I just start adding my hydrangeas I do the top portion of the wreath and then I go and do the bottom portion pretty much the same I like to typically do one side when I'm doing a grapevine wreath and then go back and um, almost almost mimic the other side. That way if I mess up, I'm not messing up on both sides, I'm just going to mess up on one and then I'll fix it that way. Um, but I do see a lot of people that make these grapevine wreaths, they actually do both sides at the same time. and. Um, be nice for me to do that but I'm just not there I'm not comfortable with it so uh, I just do one end and then I go back and do the other end
and I like my wreaths to be really full so um, once I've got most everything in place um, I take the spare um, picks and flowers and just go back in and fill them in I love the way grapevine wreaths look, but they are so messy. Um, <laughs> as you can see, all the little particles from the wreath. And then my cat, you can't see her, but she was with me, of course, as always. And she was trying to eat the little pieces of the, the, the wreath. So, and here I've got these little booties. Um, I just love them. I've had them for a couple years and just didn't know what to do with them and thought this would be an absolute adorable addition to this wreath. Um, and it reminds me of my grandson with the little baby booties. So he actually went home with my daughter. Um, he, he's no longer visiting his Lala and his Papa, so we miss him already. So this wreath is definitely going to always make me think of him with the little booties. In this next DIY, I am taking this chalkboard paper this bag that I got from Walmart in the 50% off clearance it was a dollar the chalkboard paper was originally $1.99 from Hobby Lobby but I got it for 49 cents and then a couple of paint sticks now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make two signs out of this one bag so I'm cutting it in half Now what I did is I cut out some of that chalkboard paper to fit perfectly over the joy portion because I didn't want to use that. Then I'm taking my chalk writer and just writing the little dashes and then on this one I'm going to write comfy cozy on it. Um, and I started going back in making the downstrokes larger on this one um, but I kind of wish I didn't I don't like it too much um, I didn't do it on the second one it's just I think it's because it was a, such a small space um, and that chalk rider is kind of thick it doesn't have a fine point on it I mean it, it's okay it looks pretty good um, but I, if I had to do that one portion over again I wouldn't have outlined the letters more so then I just hot glue that sign over there and then I take my paint sticks and I just decided to leave them as the natural wood color and I thought that was nice. And so I just hot glue one to the top and one to the bottom. I do make sure that I Put the stick over the holes at the top of the bag because I don't want that to show. And then you'll see the piece of gingham ribbon that I had. I actually end up using that as the hanger on the two signs. So on this other sign it says sweater weather. I just thought it was really cute when I saw this bag and it, it did make me think of the fact that being under a blanket or something, you know, that's what I like to do when it's cold or rainy. And then, you know, obviously because it's cold the winter time, you know, wearing sweaters. I love wearing sweaters. So I really like these two signs. They were really cheap and real quick to do. 
so this next DIY is these are the snow words that came from Hobby Lobby and I got them about two years ago and last year I decided I would paint them but I never really did anything with it I loved the blue that I used but we don't really decorate with blue so I never really put them out so I thought I would do something with them something a little bit different this year and I've got these two love signs from Dollar Tree and what I'm doing is I'm just taking the, the staples out that I can and the string tie off of it. And then I'm going to flip it over and I've got some handles from some paint sticks that I had cut off for different projects. And I actually use those to, to hot glue the two signs together. I really like using the paint stick handles because they are pretty thick. They're a lot better, more sturdy than the uh, craft sticks to me. But, so I like to use them. Plus, um, you know, you can always use these, glue these on and use them to, on your signs if you want to staple something because these signs from the Dollar Tree are so thin that if you usually, if you use your regular staple gun, it will pierce through and I don't really like that <laughs> so um, I will plan on going back and taking those silver hearts off so I can go ahead and use them in another DIY because we're gonna have some Valentine DIYs coming up so here I'm taking this clear glue and I am going to um, put it all over the two boards what I have is two uh, gingham craft papers that I had got from Hobby Lobby. They were both originally $1.99 and I got them on clearance for $0.49. Cents. It's bright, shiny, kind of got like a little hologram effect going to me um, and I'm going to glue those to the two boards. I mean, I'm going to glue the I'm going to glue the paper to the two boards and they are a really thick they're actually thicker than the normal craft paper you get so um the good thing was even though i put a ton of glue on there i didn't really get any bubbles or anything like that so i did try to line up every the papers together to make sure that the squares were going out well and I'm just placing the letters onto the board and I'm gonna put a ton of hot glue on there to keep them um, to keep them up for the sign yeah I really wish I remembered what blue that is it is so gorgeous to me oh um, it's, it is. It's just so pretty. So after gluing the letters down, I do go and trim up the paper on here. And I thought this still looked a little plain for me. I was thought about maybe putting some jute cord, um, but I didn't really like it. So I took some of this bling wrap from the Dollar Tree and just put a strip at the top and the bottom. And then I just added some jute cord to the back as a hanger for the sign. And I think it turned out really cute. So 
sorry I had if you've ever worked with this bling wrap before it's got um, a bunch of areas it's just little strips of these little diamond gems or whatever but there's also a little a bunch of holes in between them so as I'm putting them on there I'm getting the glue on my fingers and I'm trying to get it because get it off because it's hot and uh, it was getting pretty thick on there so I uh, just removed that put my little jute cord string on the back and I was able to hang it up So for the final DIY, this is another wreath. This is a bamboo wreath that my sister gave me. And I've got these beautiful frosty eucalyptus picks from Joann's. I got them, I uh, want to say 60-70% off, something like that, I can't remember. But it was they were so gorgeous, I couldn't pass them up. I've got some ribbon here. And I'm going to make one of my typical bows and I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller because the wreath is, is gonna be small and I don't want the bow to be too overpowering so I'm just gonna loop the ribbons around each other um, uh, several times and then I'm going to cut the slits on the sides of what the loops will be and then I'll cut some tails and I'll cut slits on the sides of the tails and take a Chanel stem and also attach them together and then I was actually able to take the Chanel stem this was a lot easier to work with and put the Chanel stems looped in between some of the little vines on there to help the bow stay in place. And then here I just start fluffing my bows. Now that white ribbon, it's so pretty. Um, <clears throat> I got it from Hobby Lobby. But it is really thick. And I don't know about you guys, but I do like a stiffer wreath. Um, no, a stiffer um, ribbon. Uh, because it's easier to work with and it stays in place a lot better. I don't really like the satin uh, ribbons as much or the real thin ones. Uh, it's a lot easier to just uh, not stay in place and you have to work with them and manipulate them a little bit more in my opinion. So I really like the thicker wire ribbon. So I like to take on these smaller wreaths and stuff My when my tails aren't so long. I like to um, dovetail them, of course, like I always do with my ribbon. But um, I like to take it in my hand, as you see me doing here, and kind of giving it that curl. It makes it nice and look a little bit fuller as well. So then I just cut my three bushels, and I cut them into pieces, and then I just start putting them all in the wreath and it was as simple as that this probably took about a good 10 minutes 
at most to make. So on some of them where they were a little bit extra long, I did cut it down a little bit because it was ending up poking out a little too far and it wasn't going along with the curve of the reef like I needed it to. But it was good because then I just cut it off and stick it in and filled in some of the gaps. So here it is, a very beautiful and simple frosted eucalyptus wreath. I just absolutely adore this. Thank you for watching, and again, Happy New Year. Be safe.